If you're just getting started in Premiere Pro and you want to learn how to create vertical video for social media, my friend, you're in the right place. Grab a cup of water, a cup of tea, a blanket, get cozy, and let's jump on in. So we have a new Premiere Pro project open. First, we need to create a sequence, which is the timeline that we edit in. To do that, click on this new item icon and click on sequence. And then from here, you're given a bunch of presets. In our case, we wanna go to social, right? And you can see there's one for us for vertical video. They actually call it portrait. Should technically be vertical, but it's nine by 16, the exact opposite of landscape, which is 16 by nine. And you can see it has a default frame rate 30 frames per second. But what if we wanna change that? What if we have a different frame rate? You can go to settings. And in our case, I actually use 29.97. You can see in my clip that it's 29.97. So you wanna make sure you have that matched. Go ahead and change that time base. You can also save this as a preset so you can use it in the future. Press okay. And now it's saved under custom. So I'm gonna give my sequence a name, V1 vertical edit and press OK. So now we have our vertical sequence that's black because it's empty. Now, an easier way to work in Premiere Pro is to change it to a different workspace for vertical video. So you can go up here to workspaces and choose vertical. So you can see in this new vertical workspace, it's more ideal to work in because you're given more real estate, a bigger program window for vertical specifically. So our timeline is currently empty right now. There's nothing in it and that's why it's black. So now we're going to drop our talking head into the sequence. This is it right here. If I change to the icon view, you can see that this is a landscape clip, not vertical. So watch what happens when I take this clip and I drag it into the timeline. You're going to get this warning that says the aspect ratio of the clip does not match the sequence. And if you wanna change the sequence, in this case, we don't wanna change the sequence. So we're going to keep existing settings. So this is just some silly footage of me pretending to be a hippie doing a meditation. And you'll learn how to remove the green screen here in a moment. But first you can see we have the black bars above and below, which we don't want. So we need to resize it. So to resize, you need to click on the clip and then you need to go up to motion here. And here you can actually click and resize the clip. What's even easier is if you select motion and then you can use these transform controls just to scale it up into frame and you can always reposition it side to side. But when you're trying to reposition things, I always find it more useful to have a save zone guide because social media, you have a UI, like little icons covering and a description that can cover part of the video, cropping out important information. So I've actually turned one of the safe guides that me and my team use into a motion graphics template, which is really, really useful. So if you go to essential graphics, and by the way, you can download this. The link is just down below. You can see that I have mine right here already imported. You can just click on this little icon to import a motion graphics template, and it'll be here inside your essential graphics panel forever, unless you move it or delete it. So I can take this save zone guide and drag it on any layer here and just expand it out because this is just a PNG file saved as a motion graphics template. So you want all the important information, you want your talking head to be centered here. So you can see that we're good to go. Now I may drag and drop this later on when we add captions, just to make sure the captions aren't getting cut off as well. And we can just delete it and use it later. So in all of my projects, we actually color grade using a template and we have a few different effects that we use for that. And I have a color template sequence already created with two adjustment layers that have some gamma compensation and color correction. If you're interested into looking into these, um, you can become a patron and I will make this available to patrons so you can see what effects we use here. So I can just copy them, paste it here, and you can see immediately it looks a lot better. If to make this more simple, let's nest it. Let's select all of our clips right click, select nest. And nesting will just make it one easy layer to work with. So now it's time to do our rough cut, which is essentially cutting out the bad takes. And you can just, you know, expand the tracks if you wanted to. So it's a little bit easier to see your timeline and you can kind of go through and cut out the bad stuff. So we can just see that this is just me setting up here and then 
So we can take the best clip here of me drumming. I think this one's good. So we can press C. Because our uh, video and audio are linked, we can just click cut and it cuts both of them together here. Then we can press V again to go back to the selection tool. And to ripple delete, we can press shift delete. And then it just deletes that from the timeline. The information is still there. It's just deleted from the sequence. Aloha video editors. Let's take a break from our chaotic timelines and pixel perfection. That looks good to me. So press C, cut, shift, delete. Essentially, I'm just gonna go through this whole timeline and cut out the parts that I don't wanna use until we get our rough cut. So I've gone through using the basic cutting tools that I just showed you to create a rough cut here. So you can see all the cut points. And so next I wanna add stock footage and B-roll. And one of the places that me and my team find a lot of stock footage and B-roll is from Envato Elements. And what's really great is they have a panel inside of Premiere Pro. So you can see here they have sound effects, music, and video. And you can search directly in Premiere and download it to your timeline so you don't have to leave the app. But before we add stock footage, we need to get rid of our green screen, right? So we don't have to apply it to all these different clips individually because this was a nest. So we need to double click on this clip. We can go and select this main clip because this is the clip that we're gonna apply the effect to. Go to effects panel and let's search for ultra key. So you can drag and drop this or double click to apply it to the clip. And then down here is where you can choose the key color. So I like to select kind of a darker green color because it includes the lighter in here. And you can see that there's gray here and we don't want the gray. It's actually easier to go into the alpha channel mode. So here we want me to be white and the background to be black. So we still have a lot more to do. A quick way of getting there is going to aggressive and it can help you. From here, you can go into these matte generation controls to adjust, you know, maybe how much shadow is being removed from the background. So we can reduce the shadow and already you can see that it's looking a lot cleaner. So I have made a few other tutorials that go in more depth and I actually prefer to do green screening and After Effects because you can get a better key. So you can watch that video if you're interested in that and then you can pull the clip into Premiere Pro. You can actually right click on this clip and save as a preset and it will appear over in your presets like I have over here. And this is great so that way you don't have to redo it every time if you have the same setup. And so now we have the key. If you go to the wrench tool, go to transparency grid, this shows you that alpha channel layer to ensure that it is indeed transparent. But of course you can turn this off at any time. Okay, now if we go back to the rough cut, you can see that the green screen is gone also. And now we can start to download some clips. So maybe in the beginning here, I want to be inside of a jungle. We can go up here and go to video and we can search by keyword or use AI based on what is in our timeline to generate clips for us. First, let's go and find some clips of the jungle from Envato. And by the way, you do need to have an Envato subscription for this to work. It is a free panel, but in order to download non-watermarked versions, you need to connect your subscription, which is underneath settings. And then you can set your download folder as well, which is really useful. So it can download directly to the same project file. So everything stays online. Let's try out a few of these. You can always change them later on. Let's try this one. So now I have the downloaded stock video clip. I can double click and open it up. And look at that, we have it here. Now, because we want these clips to be behind our main video, we can move up everything onto video layer two and we can start to put stuff behind me. For example, this one from our source panel here, we can just take the video and drag it underneath. So we can move it up, we can scale it. I think it looks pretty good. I might end up changing it. Awesome. You know, we can also look for some other things like for example, video flares. If we want some light flares to add on top of me, we can download this. And as this downloads, I wanna mention that Envato Elements set up an awesome discount for your first month on Envato Elements, 70% off. I put a link just down below to download unlimited sound effects, stock footage, music, etc., for your videos. And they're a sponsor of today's video. We've partnered with Envato for many, many years now. Comparing them to other platforms, it really is the most affordable option. So I highly encourage you guys to go check it out, especially now that they have 
this panel in place. If I had any feedback for Envato, it would only be that I wish that some other file size were more compressed, like this was 557 megabytes. So they could have provided an MP4 version that's like more like 50 megabytes that we could have used, especially for social video. But for now, it works just fine. So we have the lens flare here. We can just drag and drop it on top of our footage here. And you'll notice that it's, you know, kind of black. Where did the footage go? And that's because we need to change our blend mode to screen to get rid of the dark areas. So this is what it looked like without it and with it on. So it just adds a little bit more array of sunshine and we can, you know, scale it down. We can actually rotate this because it's in the landscape. So let's make this 90. There we go. Let's go ahead and go crazy and I'll show you the final edit and then we'll add some captions as well. All right, so as you can see, we finished the edit here. And as I scrub through, you can see we have a lot of cool effects. We have this kind of lotus flower in the background, a lot of overlays, and all of which came from Envato Elements. We even did a funny effect here with the mouse and the pineapple transforming. And if you want to learn how to do that, if you like this video, if you give this video a thumbs up, we can talk about this pineapple thing. Maybe we'll do something special for our patrons. But before we play this back, which I'm sure you're excited to see, let's add some captions. Now, if you're okay without animated captions, you can create still captions automatically with AI inside of Premiere Pro. You can go up to window, you can go to the text panel and using AI, Premiere Pro has already generated a transcript of our timeline for us. Now we just need to go and create captions. And this is where we can choose uh, different styles if we have any presets in here already. And you can choose the length, uh, the duration, if you want it to be double or single. In this case, I'm gonna do double. I'm gonna reduce the character length uh, a little bit here. And let's go ahead and hit create captions. So here are our captions here. And I recommend just going through quickly and making sure that everything is spelled correctly. You can just easily make edits just like a text document. All right, so everything is looking good now. Just a couple minor edits I had to make. And now you can see that we have these captions down here, but they're in kind of like Times New Roman and they're super low. Remember our safe zone thing that I was talking about? We can add that back into the timeline here as we stylize our captions. We can go back to essential graphics here, go to browse, and let's just re-add inside of our timeline. You can see that it created a subtitle track here. So I can select one of these and change the style and position. First of all, I wanna bring this up higher because it's going to get cut off. And let's change this to any type of font you wanna use. Let's try the Poppins font, that's kind of fun. We can change the size. If you wanted to, you can add a background behind it and increase the padding and have rounded edges. And maybe in this case, we want it to be white and change our fill color to match my hat, for example. And then you might be like, well, this is just this one caption. I wanna apply it to all of them. You don't need to copy and paste it. You can go up to track style and you can create a style and you can call it anything you want, it could be namaste. Now all of our captions are in this style and you can scrub through to make sure everything looks good and you can also roll out our safe zone to just double check that none of the captions here are getting cut off. So as we scrub through here, you can see that these are just static caption. There's no animation happening. If you want animation, you can use plugins for Premiere Pro. For example, I've been using Firecut recently because I found the user interface just really easy to use. And I actually made a full video on how that works. You can check that out in a card and I'll drop it down below too. But if you're fine with static, I mean, it's easy to read and you don't need to have the animating captions. It's completely fine. So let's turn off the safe zone here and let's show you the video that we got. Aloha video editors. Let's take a break from our chaotic timelines and pixel perfection. Close your eyes and join me on this 30 second meditation because we all know that's all the time that you can spare. Now take a deep breath. Imagine you're on a beach and your mouse is replaced by a tropical drink. Feel those tense shoulders loosen up like a stubborn clip finally giving way to your editing magic. 
Embrace this moment of relaxation because soon enough, you'll be back in the editing jungle, swinging from project to project. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and get ready to conquer the editing seas once again. You got this, you editing extraordinaire. Namaste. <laughs> so totally meant to be cheeky and funny. I hope you guys enjoyed that. One thing I wanted to point out here too is that we did layer several different music tracks here as well as some sound effects here. So when we had the jungle stock video clips come in, we added a sound effects of the jungle as well that you can hear. Because soon enough, you'll be back in the editing jungle. So you can hear the ooh from project to project. When you're ready, and the waves come crashing in here on this layer. So don't be afraid to stack those clips up to create kind of a soundscape for your edits. And once you're done and you're ready to export, you're gonna go up to export and you'll see on the left, you can actually publish directly to Facebook, TikTok, Vimeo, X, and YouTube. So if you do YouTube shorts, you can post directly to YouTube. If it's under 60 seconds and, six, and nine by 16, then you can upload directly. There's also TikTok direct publishing as well. I normally just save it as a media file. And when you're like, gal, what setting should I use? Just use a preset adaptive high bit rate. It pretty much covers them all. Just make sure your out point is set at the very end of your video, which is right around here. So we can change that here by pressing O and then you can save it to your drive. Hit export and you got your video. So this was a more in-depth video from start to kind of finish. Although we didn't cover everything here, I think this will provide a lot of value to you getting started and maybe to some of you intermediate editors too that maybe never took a course before and kind of learned on your own. There's lots of little things that you pick up as you go along on your editing journey. Thank you so much for watching this video start to finish. If you made it this far along, thank you so much. And as always, Keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.